One of the ways that I think we can search for trauma in our lives, though, is if we have an experience that became a before and after for us. Mental health is the same as physical health. Mm -hmm. And in some way it is because all of it is a bodily experience. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been talking about your physical bodies. We're still talking about the physical body. Mm -hmm. When it comes to mental illness, we're talking about our emotions and our cognitions. And so when I can't trust or think I might not be able to trust my mind, I might not be able to trust my emotions. Man, that's more jarring. And so first of all, I really want us to talk about emotional health. We need to get in touch with where we are emotionally. And so for years, the science has been that emotions are negative, that they undermine our thinking, they undermine our decision making. But since about 2010, there's been a revolution in the neurobiology research that shows that emotions are actually foundational to our thinking and that emotions precede our thinking and that emotions are bodily experiences, mm -hmm. not figments of the imagination. And so that is a shift that has to be made because mm -hmm. as long as we believe that our mind is some superpower that's floating outside of our body rather than the fruit of what's happening within us, we will continue to strive for a goal that is not even realistic. And when it comes to the church, the church has done the same thing. We've taken this cultural view of the mind as a superpower and then grabbed some scriptures about the mind mm -hmm. and cemented it as God's mandate. And then we're trapped because we feel like we should be able to fix this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus and renew your mind. And yes, those verses are there, but it doesn't paint the whole picture mm -hmm. and it doesn't leave us looking anything like Jesus. Jesus was an extremely emotionally expressive man. Yes. He expressed his emotional pain in ways that we would never do in the way that our culture has trained us. Jesus is crying outside the tomb of Lazarus in public, mm -hmm. a man. Let's think about how our culture would respond to that. We see Jesus in the temple angry mm -hmm. and showing fury. And then we see Jesus in Gethsemane absolutely overwhelmed. Yeah. He literally says, I am sorrowful unto death, meaning my emotional pain is so deep right now, I feel like I'm going to die right here. We see him going to the three closest disciples saying, basically, please don't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And then we see him crying in the book. Uh, when Paul writes this, he says that Jesus cried out to the one who could save him from death with loud crying and tears. Jesus is begging his father for a break. That is the emotion of fear. Mm. Jesus was experiencing fear. Why else would he not want to do it? And so I really want people to pay attention to how freely Jesus expresses his emotional pain because we, we see sadness, we hear anger, we see fear, emotional fear, and we never see Jesus repent. Mm -hmm. And many of us would consider a prayer like that to be us breaking down. To be us not having faith if we went to God begging for a break. Please don't let this happen to me. Please let this cup pass for me. And so I really want people to lean into when is the last time you allowed yourself to fully experience and express your emotional pain? Because we consider that bad in our everyday lives. But if we want to be made into the conform to the image of his son, we would not be avoiding our emotional sure. pain in that way. We have emotional pain when we need something mm -hmm. that is fundamental to our survival. So when we are sad, it is because we need connection. Mm -hmm. We experience sadness when we've been disconnected from someone or something valuable to us. And mm -hmm. sadness says, I'm hungry for connection. Anger says, I am hungry for value and boundaries. So when something valuable has been devalued, someone is bullying our child, someone breaks something that we paid a lot of money for mm -hmm. and doesn't seem to care, we get angry because something valuable is being devalued and we need that value restored. And then finally, when we're afraid, we need to feel safe. Emotional pain indicates hunger for something that human beings need to be well. Connection, value, safety. And when you starve yourself, eventually those hunger pangs can overwhelm you. I think the first place you begin is just accepting that you're human, that it's mm -hmm. okay to have these painful feelings, and that it isn't a sign of weak. Embracing your vulnerability and telling yourself, hey, it is okay for me 
to not be perfect. Because a lot of times when we talk about mental health, we're really talking about our emotions Mm -hmm. and the emotions that we're feeling. And so um, I encourage you to just start doing the things that make you feel better Mm -hmm. naturally. One of the ways that I think we can search for trauma in our lives, though, is if we have an experience that became a before and after for us. Ever since then, my view of myself, the world, other people, God, changed for the worse. We likely experience the trauma in that space because when our bodies shift that way, it has an impact on our beliefs. And so if you have a, ever since then, I swore I would never, that may be a trauma. And then check, am I having bodily reactions to it as well? Um, Do I want to avoid reminders of it? Do I dream about it or have flashbacks that I push away? All of that would suggest I am dealing with a trauma. It actually impacted my body's experience. Again, these are bodily experiences. And so that's important for us to embrace But we struggle against it because we don't want to believe, number one, that we're vulnerable enough as human beings to be changed by something. We are so future oriented, especially in Western culture, it's go forward. And so we feel like we're failing if that's not happening for us immediately. But it's really important to embrace the fact that we're vulnerable creatures and we are able to be injured.